Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play The Four Heroes of Light. Well, we finished up our business at Guerra there, so now I want to head to Arbor and get that magic spell I've been telling you guys about. I wonder if we'll get any information about Guerra while we're over there, too. I mean, they were kind of interacting together. I wish they did that more throughout the game. I mean, beginning to to the end, it's like every nation is basically isolated from everyone. There's not really any much interaction between them. And whatever. But, uh, we got a... I don't know what kind of animal I'm talking to, but, well, now we know where it is. Is that a, like a raccoon or a ferret or something? I don't know. Oh, who's this guy with the unique character sprite? Oh, yeah, I suppose so. We've been everywhere there, though. Oh, well, thanks for chatting, I guess. Hmm. Anyway, I've changed my setup as I have listed in the video description there. All right, yeah, remember we're in the past here. So, yeah, I guess this is before they decided to do all that stuff. But, oh, right, we're in the past. I was like, wait a minute, we killed him! Well, he's still here now, I guess. Uh, not that I've noticed. I'll keep an eye out for one. I suppose Jusqua and Air wouldn't know about that. Or not just Gwen Air, just Gwen Unita wouldn't know about that. Anyway, I made Air into a animal here so that way I could talk to Jusqua and fairies. Oh yeah, well they were saying the legendary magic might be down there. We should check it out. There's no more treasure here to collect at all. Well, I haven't seen any rodents of unusual size yet. Oh, uh, well, I've been here before, but... Well, that's one way of building your house. Oh, hmm, no one ever told me about that before. Oh, yeah, we saw him on the way here. I don't know what's going on. Hmm, I wonder why. No, of course not. Now you're just talking crazy. What's the worst that could possibly happen, even though the entire sky has turned purple? And we don't have a day or night anymore around here. Oh yeah, one thing about the magic shops around here, they do sell leaf magic now, which is essentially non-elemental for some reason, but it's not really good. If I wanted to do non-elemental damage, I, I would use Magic Might. It would deal way more damage. So, yeah, Leaf is kind of pointless. Well, you did. Or someone did around here. What would be so hard about just coming over here and taking it? I don't know. Well, I guess you would need a fairy to get through that cave, wouldn't you? Hmm, or the fairy wings, or whatever we got now. Well, she doesn't look that special to me, but okay. Well, maybe we should follow up after him. I don't see any bad guys around here, or any other problems, though, like Guerra. Oh, right, yeah, we've already taken a look at that. Um, yeah, that's true. We've already gotten all the treasure there, but for some reason they still have enemies there. New enemies, too, at that. Maybe they were thinking about doing something with it, but they never did, like Fantasy Star 3 or something. I don't know. But it just kind of reminds me, like, all those little areas that the plot never te yeah, the plot never tells us to go there, they still have new enemies anyway, for whatever reason. I guess maybe they figured if you wanted to backtrack or something before, or yeah, to get treasures that you might have missed before or something, but they didn't want to make it that easy on you. 
But anyway, what I want to do now is upgrade my spell fencer crown here for Brant there to unlock Mystic Sword. It's essentially the same thing as Magic Sword, but it's just more powerful. I don't think it stacks with Magic Sword though, so it's one or the other. And that's why I've got a Water Tome in Brant's inventory, because we're going to need that later on. As well as the gaunt Spring Gauntlets. And Mystic or Magic Sword, either one, they both stack with Elemental Gauntlets too. So you can effectively make your attack more Water Elemental or whatever element you got. But anyway, okay, well, let's take a look around the Great Tree Roots. See if we can't find that magic spell or tome around here. Oh, yeah, we're trying to save the world and all. There don't seem to be many problems here. Oh, well, I've already got maximum party members, but sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you, got, you can take care of that. Why not? But anyway, yeah, this treasure is in another one of the dead ends that's, that was around here, but it didn't contain treasure before. Or there wasn't a chest there before, so that's why I never went there before. But now that the world is engulfed in darkness, there is a treasure there that we need to get. Wow, the encounter rate's really taking it easy on me today. I hope I didn't speak too soon. Nah, I'm not going to get into a but thou must situation. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Oh, that's a weird name for an ultimate spell, but okay. I kind of like it, though. Kind of reminds me of Tilt. But that's another game, viewers. Oh, hey, how's it going? Nuts. Well, you don't run the show here, though. What are you going to do? You're not going to tell us, are you? Yeah, we'll let you take the rap for it. Ah, oh, well. Couldn't you let us use it? Now? Okay, never mind, then. But yeah, the reason why I saved that arbor there is so that way I can just warp right out of here and get back there. Well, hopefully the queen knows what to do. Someone had to put up that seal or barrier or whatever. The seal has been broken! Oh, hey, there's a, there's Tort. He wasn't here before, though. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, if you can't tell, yeah, the boy, wizard, whatever, who was running around in the great tree roots, or roots, that's Tort there. But I guess before he got turned into an animal. Oh, sure, why not? What if we don't, though? Then what do we do? Well, fortunately we do, though. And you can't talk to Tort unless you're an animal, so... Or we could just kill it. That would do the job too. You don't. How are you even gonna get there? Well, okay, you can have fun climbing around caves all day to find a way in there. But anyway, yeah, we need to go to the volcano up there next. And I'll just leave my job classes and everything alone for now. Although I do want to switch up some of my equipment eventually. I had Earth Shields, or not Earth Shields, Rock Shields equipped on most of my party members, but now I don't need that. So anyway, let's see. Yeah, I had Poison Capes equipped on most of my party members too. And unfortunately, we don't have a Flame Cape for uh, Unita there, so I'm going to leave her on the Soil Cape there. But everyone else, I want to have status protection to the relevant statuses that I actually care about. And, yeah, let's make a backup here, just in case. 
But yeah, remember to bring a water tome, or blizzard, I suppose it doesn't matter. You can bring a water tome for Brant there to use with Mystic Sword later on. Now, I know what you're thinking, viewers. H.C. Bailey, would using more powerful tomes with Mystic Sword or Magic Sword, would that increase the damage even more? And to my knowledge, the answer is no. It doesn't matter what spell you use. All that matters is what the ability you use. Mystic Sword will be more powerful using, like, Watera or what Wataraga wouldn't make, let you deal more damage. Now, normally, I would have Brant attacking here, but because we got Flans here, we need magic to take him out. And there you are. But yeah, they have really high physical evasion. So just use Magic Might, boom, you're done. Even, I haven't upgraded my weapons yet, so even if I used Waterga or Blizzaga on all of them, Air wouldn't be able to kill them, or at least not guarantee to be able to do that. So Magic Might, I think, is the way to go. It costs one more AP than the other spells anyway, so I'm glad to pay that just to get the guarantee. But yeah, they are weak to water. These guys are not, unlike their previous forms. These are more powerful versions of the ones we met up with earlier. Well, not that much more powerful, but they are. No elemental weakness to worry about. Pretty much everything here is either weak to water or not resistant to it. And they have no other elemental weakness, which is why Blizzard is the only spell that I've given to air there. And also, a lot of the enemies in here drop rubies, so this would be a really good place to farm them, except you got red jellies, so it's not that efficient to kill them. With, like with Blade Blitz or something like that. So I actually don't like using this place because you know me, viewers, I hate missing. And there's nothing really cost effective that can kill a group of four red jellies like that. And they are very common around here. Thanks for the fire elemental weapons that we'll never use. But it is there. Now, at this point, we got a little bit of a puzzle to solve after killing some more new enemies. Uh, just more powerful vampire bats. No elemental weakness that we can exploit here, unfortunately. Oh, by the way, the red jellies, just like the, one, just like the other jellies that we met up with earlier in the game, they can merge together, but that never really happens. In the Garm that we fought earlier, I forgot to mention, they can use Fire Breath on your party. But as long as you got Magic Shield, or Flame Shield, you'll be fine. I would give a Flame Shield to Unita, but I think the status protection is more important. And we're going to find some help for her in the very near future. So at this point, we, get, we got these switches around here, and they'll redirect... There's, like, patches of lava throughout the floor there. Yeah, you see how that one came up? So basically what it does is it lowers the magma in some areas and raises it in others. So you have to go through, find the right switch, hit it, then go around to the new path that you just opened up with that switch, find the next switch, and so on and so forth. So I will direct you to the most efficient way to do so. And get all the treasure along the way, too, of course. But yeah, the patch up there, now it's gone. I think you can actually walk through the lava, if I recall correctly. But you would obviously take damage doing that. We don't have float spells in this game. But now we get the mighty flame cape. You would want to give that immediately to... Uh, you need to there. But yeah, that's basically what I'm going to be doing with with Unita set up a lot because I'm always going to have her, or almost always, going to have the Shield of Light equipped on her for the status protection. So just equip whatever elemental cape is relevant to the area. Yeah, and Unita will be fine with that. 
You don't need to worry about elemental shields for her anymore. For the most part. There are some times when I want to change things up, like give the shield to air for a lot more physical defense once I upgrade it later on in the game. Now this floor is a little tricky. We got three switches here and we need to hit them in a certain order so that way we can get through to the right part of the floor here. There is some, or there are some stairs to the right there, but they just lead you to an isolated section of the floor with no treasure and there's magma blocking the way, so there's nothing we can really do about that. So you hit the one in the lower right and then you fight these guys. We could have met up with them a little earlier at the Moonlight Tower, but I didn't. But yeah, they can use Flame Blast on your entire party, so you want to take them out pretty quickly. Blade Blitz should get the job done. So yeah, I don't even need to upgrade my equipment. I can already one-shot just about anything. Eventually, though, I will, because there's going to be a boss coming up that has obscenely high physical defense and magic defense. More, far more than the final boss, too. It's ridiculous. It takes forever to kill the guy, but, or yeah, without upgrading your weapons. So I will be doing that so the boss fights don't take forever. But anyway, yeah, to get to here, you hit the lower right switch, the upper right switch, the lower left switch, boom, the path is opened up for you. Hooray! Whoa! Nuts. And well, we got a new one here, I, I think. I don't think I've ever fought this one variety before. But it doesn't matter because we're going to just kill the guy instantly anyway. And that'll work out just fine. By the way, the darkness staff on Unita there, even though it says it has a magic attack stat, it still helps out with her healing. And I just like using a white mage for regular healing throughout dungeons just to keep everyone's HP topped off as best as I can do. And also that helps us get our turns a little faster there too. But okay, those stairs up there take us to the end. And normally I'd stop the episode here, but well, there's something I want to show you that's coming up ahead there. I'll fight a random battle off screen before actually going through the boss fight to get my AP and HP restored. Or as much as I can, anyway. But okay, we got a new enemy on the right there. New! I think that's the flying enemy there. And they can do a lot of different status ailments. Blind, curse, silence, you name it. That's why I've got the capes, or the status protection capes, that I had earlier. Oh, well, what's going on here? Well, in order to understand what's going on here, you actually have to make your lead character into an animal. Because otherwise, you'll just see them motioning, and they won't do anything. Well, I mean, they will, but you won't hear them talking to each other because, well, you're not an animal. You can't understand that. But I don't want to go into the fight with an animal form. But can we defeat Belphegor and seal him away again? Find out next time, and let's play the four heroes of light. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.